Hello, welcome to today's class. Today we will be talking about the solutions for the CBSC or the UGC examination paper first for December 2013. In the previous sessions, we have already talked about the lessons for June 2014 examination. So we are solving the past papers. In this, we would be covering the first 15 questions. So this whole series would be covered under four parts and in each part, we would be covering the 15 questions. So let's start with the first question. So the first question says, what is the main objective of a research? Now, definitely when you are working for a research, what is your primary objective? So a UGC examination considers that since you would be applying for NIT JRF and you would be clearing the examination, you would be working as a research assistant or you would be going into teaching. So teaching and research are the two sections that are highly focused in this examination. Okay. So the first question is, when you are looking to go into research, you must know the basic objective of our research. The basic objective of research is not to get an academic degree. It's not to just review the literature or summarize what is already known. It is something that deals with discovering new facts or making fresh, fresh interpretations of the known facts. For example, if I am working for a research on urban development of a city, okay, uh, for a city X, for example, okay, what I'll do is I'll review the literature from the various uh, cities of the various cities of the various countries, okay. Based on that, I'll analyze the city X, okay. I'll try to make fresh interpretations. What is the best suitable options for that city? And based on that, I try to discover new avenues or new areas of development in the region. Okay, so this is something that is very important. So for this, the correct answer is D. That is to discover the new facts and make fresh interpretations of the known fact. Okay, the next question here is the sampling error decreases with. Okay, so as you increase the size of the sample, the error decreases. Okay, so error. Sampling error and sample size has an inverse relationship. Now, how we can understand this? This is very simple to understand because, for example, if there are 10 people sitting in a room, okay, and of, the, of those 10, I have to pick two students, okay, who are exemplary or who are very good at their knowledge okay now what would happen if i increase the size of the sample from two students to five students my error would definitely decrease and i will be able to pick uh, students who are above average also and who are excellent in their academic performance so as you increase your sample size your chances of error decreases and you would surely pick up the right sample the next question here deals with, again, the question on research. So what the principle of fundamental research are used in? So let's first understand what is fundamental research. Fundamental research is a basic research okay, into some aspect. Okay? And this basic research is used in application. So it is applied research. So principles of fundamental research are always used in applied research because whenever you are trying to find an application of something, okay, you must and must know the basics or the fundamental that lies within that concept. Okay, so for any principle of fundamental research, applied uh, for principles of fundamental research, which is mainly used in applied research okay the next is users who use media for their own end are identified as now what does this mean user using a media for their own end that means the audience so first of all it's an audience because it's a user okay now audience is a choice in all of the four options now the audience who is using a media for their own acts ends is a definitely an active audience because a passive audience would just listen to it and that's it an active audience would listen to it and use it or apply it in daily life 
okay for example if i am see uh, if i am seeing a tv serial okay and in the tv serial i see that there is a family who is living with um, uh, who is living very closely okay then what would happen is a passive audience would just see the serial and forget what happened they'll just see the serial for enjoyment on the other hand an active audience would see that serial and try to learn and capture some good things from that serial and use it in their day to day life okay so that is what is a active audience the next question is classroom communication can be best described as now what uh, when we talk about classroom communication what is the most fundamental thing that we talk about in a classroom communication what is usually done is uh, i am trying to discuss something with the students and that discussion can be in two ways it can be written or it can be oral in either case there is a discussion that is taking place in the class and classroom communication is not technically a one way communication and when you are trying to discuss something be it verbally or be it in a written form it is known as discourse and discourse basically means discussion okay so classroom communication is best described as discourse it's you are not trying to explore new concepts you are not trying to work as an institution or institutionalizing what is uh, present and neither you are narrating what is written in the book in an unsignificant manner by not even telling the meaning of the students you are just keep you just keep reading the book okay that's not a good classroom communication a good classroom communication is one where there is a active discussion it can be in the form of uh, written communication where a kind of project report has been asked or a term paper has been asked or it can be in the form of oral communication where oral discussions take place in the class the next question are ideological codes shape our collective now what is a ideological code and it shapes our perception now for example uh, few years uh, few decades back if there was a ideological code that a person who has done evil will get a disease okay uh, or will fall ill okay so at that time point of time the perception of the pers people was those who are doing bad or evil will get ill okay in today's generation the perception ha is that if you are uh, there is a medical condition because of which you are ill okay and it has nothing to do with your good or bad deeds okay so that means the ideological code of the people is changing and as a result the perception of the people is changing so perception is, uh, shapes our ideological vision the next question is in a communication myths have power but are now if what is a myth let's first start with it myth is a kind of false belief it's a false belief about something okay but myth is a powerful tool for example uh, i say if i say that a black cat crossing the road is um, considered a evil sign or a uh, bad sign okay now this is a powerful notion because any person who is working for an examination or an interview if he, see, he or uh, she sees a black cat crossing the road they will think that it's a bad sign for me because that's a mindset that has become a mindset for for people but in reality that is imprecise because that that really does not hold true but it has become a powerful tool for communication among people okay so this was the first set of seven questions now let's move on to the next set of seven questions 
So in this first set of questions, most of the questions were dealing with research objectives. The next question here is, organizational communication can be equated with. Now, what is organizational communication? Organizational communication is, for example, I am working in a company, say, Google. Okay. So all the employees of the company, Google, are communicating in one way or the other. Okay. If I have done a piece of work, I'll be forwarding it to the next person. And he would be doing so to the next person in line. Okay. So there is a kind of group communication among all the employees of a group who are working together. And that is how organizations work. So organizational communication is rightly equated with a group communication. Now, what is the difference between the remaining? Intrapersonal means within the person. So if I do something, I feel I have done it correct or not. So it's my personal. Uh, you can consider it as talking to yourself. Okay. Then is interpersonal between person one and person two. Okay. Then you have mass communication. That's by means of newspaper, media. You are circulating what you feel to the people around you. Okay. So that is what is the difference between all the four kinds of communication. And the correct answer here is organization communication is equated with group communication. Then you have the next question. Now, this question is based on philosophy of logic that we will be covering in a separate topic where we'll be talking about all these terms. For this class, if I am saying one thing, for example, I am saying it's day, okay? And my friend is saying, no, it's night, okay? What she's trying to do is she's trying to oppose what I'm saying. And this opposition is also known as contradiction of contradictory behavior okay so if there are two propositions okay when one is denying the other it is a kind of uh, denying other or opposing other it's a kind of contradictory behavior now here is a next question ananya and krishna can I speak and follow english so there are uh, first of all let's analyze in this question how many people are there? So there is Ananya, there is Krishna, and there is Bulbul. So let me write first. Ananya, Krishna, and Bulbul. Now, Ananya and Krishna can speak and follow English. So I write English for them. Okay. Bulbul can write and speak Hindi as Arjuna does. So there is a fourth person, Arjuna. I write Arjuna here. Okay, so Arjuna can also write Hindi. Okay, Arjuna talks with Ananya also in Bengali. That means Arjuna and Ananya also know which language? Arjuna and Ananya also know the language Bengali. Okay, so you can write Bengali here and Bengali here. Now, Bulbul talks with Ananya in Hindi. So, Bulbul also knows Hindi and Ananya also knows Hindi. Who can speak and follow English, Hindi and Bengali? Okay. So, with this table, you can easily make out the answer. The only person who knows all the three languages, Ananya. Okay. So, the correct answer here is Ananya. If the question was, who can speak and follow only one language? The answer would be Krishna and Bulbul. Okay. And if it is two languages, it would be Arjuna. Okay. So if you try for these kind of question, if you try to arrange it in a table format or a Venn diagram, that is equally good. And in both of these cases, you will be able to answer the question correctly. Okay. Then here is a next question. A stipulative definition may be set may set may be said to be. Now, what before we answer this question, first understand what is stipulative definition. So, a stipulative definition is a kind of uh, definition where I'm trying to relate something that is merely asserted in an ad hoc fashion or a temporary fashion. So I'm just trying to um, kind of relate something to the existing phenomena. So that relation 
in itself does not hold any value so i cannot say that relation itself is either true or false so it's neither true it's not false it's neither accurate nor i can say it's inaccurate okay it's just a kind of uh, relating element that is supporting the main element okay so the answer here is it's neither true nor false okay uh, in the previous set we have missed one question here okay so here is the question the first multilingual news agency of india was the correct answer is the correct answer for this is hindustan samachar and hindustan samachar was launched by uh, ss aapte and it was launched started with 10 languages in uh, 1948 okay so it was the first multilingual news agency that was released okay. the next question here is this question says when the conclusion of an argument follows from its premises conclusively then the argument is deductive because it's following from the premises conclusively that means i can fully deduce something from a statement and when you can fully deduce something from the statement that is known as a deductive approach and the next one, the next is known as inductive approach where you feel it's likely to be true okay and then an inductive argument you feel it's likely to be true okay an analogical argument means if this is true that should be true for example if i say um uh i am a girl and i have a sister that means my sister is also a girl okay so that's a kind of analogical argument that i am making and circular argument is where i start with point a and finally land on to point a as a answer also next question here is since we have understood all these four terms here we can answer this question very well now this question says mars and uh, sorry saturn and mars are planets like earth so i have earth here and you have mars and saturn here they borrow light from the sun so all of these borrow light from sun okay they move around the sun as the earth does so these two move around the earth uh, move around the sun similar to earth okay so they have similarity with earth so those planet are inhabited by various orders of creature as earth is since earth has living creatures these two planets would also have a living uh, will also have living creatures that means i am trying to do an analogy or an analog analogical argument where i am saying since earth rotates around sun uh, is moves out moves around sun mars and saturn also moves around sun and since earth has like these two planet who are also moving around sun would also have some form of life so that's a kind of analogical argument that i am making okay so with this question when we have solved this question we can also solve the next kind of question okay the next here is the final question that we would be doing today you have you are given two premises so you have a premise is one where you say all saints are religious and you see some honest person are saints okay now if the simplest way to answer this question is in all other cases you might get confused but if i write the sentence as some honest persons are saints okay and since i say all saints are religious i can replace saints with religious here i can say some honest per persons are religious and this i can do only when there is a word all before that because if there are few saints who are religious i cannot replace the word religious here okay now is this phrase matching somewhere we can see this phrase is exactly matching in the choice c therefore choice c is the correct option now for this question i'll repeat again for these kinds of question you can replace only when there is a word all written before them 
if this all word is not written you cannot replace the word religious if i say all saints are religious that means few saints would also be religious okay if i say all saints are religious okay that means few saints would also be religious and even there is one saint he would also be religious okay so when there is all that applies to each and every member of the group so if i say some honest persons are saints means all these saints all saints should be religious so some honest persons are also religious that's the correct interpretation that you can derive from these two statements so this question was based on a kind of uh, conclusion argument so in the today's class we have talked about the basic fundamental questions which deal with uh, research aptitude then you have some questions on communication technology uh, some basic questions and the questions based on argument and conclusion usually the questions on argument and conclusion are uh, the kind of last question that we discussed the question on saint and uh, uh, the religiousness of saint but uh, the first two questions that we covered were based on the basic fundamentals of what is a kind of argument what are the types of argument okay so in these kinds of question it's very important that you cover the theory as well as uh, the practical questions so the theory in the topic of philosophy of logic and the concept of argument and deduction is very important for ugc paper 1 examination we'll be covering the next set of 15 question in the next class till then have a good day ahead